Hello, hello, friends. Grace here at the Comfiness of Grace. Oh my gosh, I'm a little bit out of breath. I forgot my girl. I forgot my girl. I cut her out earlier at my desk, which is in my office across the house. Whew. So I went running. I think I came running back so I could meet you on time to hang out with you and do a little chalking. We're going to do some chalk tour um, play in a book. Remember, I started my little book. This is a little art journal that I created out of a novel. So it's a, a book that I read. And then I had the book available. So I was like, okay, we can turn this into an art journal. Oh no, we're backwards. Let's fix this. Let's see if I can, while we're live, if it'll let me. Come on. Yeah, baby, that's what I'm talking about right there. There we go. Okay, so anyway, this is my new art journal. I only have the one page done, so today we're gonna add to it. We're gonna do another page. Now, I did go ahead, when I did this one, was it last week? Yeah, last week that we did this one, I glued the pages in front of you so you got to see how to glue these pages together. I already went ahead and glued the pages together so I would have thicker pages to work with um, for chalking. So I'm just gonna pick one of these and we're gonna work on it. Let me get a little clip because this is what happens. <laughs> it won't stay open. I think, so she's gonna go on the page with a phrase, but I think I want more words behind her. So I'm gonna skip, let's see, what did I do here? Uh, I'm going to find the page with the most words. Let's just use this one, I guess. Um, here. She's going to go on here, and then I'm going to use one of these. <gasps> They're really great little phrases. You are enough. Choose to shine. You look amazing is the one I really, that the one that really drew me in. You look amazing with her. How cute will that be? So we're going to do that on this page. All right. That being said, let me just get myself set up. Um, we did some napkin journaling last night from this napkin inside the craft therapy club last night. Um, I did something I've never done before. I, I kind of took my hand out and I challenged the ladies in the group to take, this is the, one of the napkins in the welcome gift that the ladies who just joined got. And we took this napkin and painted it, painted it in our napkin journal. So anyway, that was from last night and it was on my seat. So I needed to clear that spot so I have a place to sit to hang out with you. Oh gosh, now I'm really off. There we go. Let's get you down so you can see the table. I'm going to go with either yellow or orange. You guys, I'm kind of loving yellow lately. Remember I told you I wasn't a big fan of purple and then all, like purple's just growing on me. Well, we used yellow in one of the chalk journal pages a few weeks ago. And I really, really loved the way that page, well, it was probably about a month ago now. I really loved the way that page turned out. So I thought today I'm going to challenge myself to use some yellow. I made, she's black and white. This is a black and white photo of this little girl. Um, so I may end up doing, I was thinking about doing a solid black background or, or something of that nature. So let's, let's just get into it. I got to find the feed though first. Got to find the feed and make sure that you guys can see and hear me because I'm just not so sure. Oh, there's Mary. I see Mary's comment. Good morning, Mary. Here's a little heart for your teal heart next to your name. Anybody who has a teal heart, they are Facebook subscribers, meaning they are um, offering $1.99 a month to support the page here on Facebook. And I go live with them once a week. We create, we call it happy hour. And actually Mary and all the subscribers who are out there, I don't know that I've ever done happy hour on a Saturday, but... On Friday, when we normally do happy hour, I am going to be with my son at his college. It's not quite an orientation, but it's called Admitted Student Day. So the students who have been admitted to the college for next fall are invited to come to the campus and get questions answered and see the dorms and all that stuff. So on Friday, I am going to be doing family things with my soon-to-be college student, my high school senior now. Um, so. I can't do happy hour with you guys on Friday, so I moved it to a Saturday morning coffee chat. So I think it's set up for 10 a.m., but look at the calendar for the week. It's here on the page in the featured section, um, so you can get that calendar. If you need to, you can just message me. If you're not sure and you're wondering, I will look it up and find it for you. I think I usually print out the schedule to have next to me, but it's, it's in my office, so there's that. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome to Newbies. Donnie in Virginia with Crafton and Creations. Thanks for being here. Where are you coming in from? Where are you coming in from? It's Donnie in Virginia, but what state are you in? We would love to know where you're coming from. 
Thanks for being here. Happy Wednesday, Janet and Lisa's here. Now I can see you. Debbie Gravoy, my Florida friend. All right, I was thinking black gesso with a really bright paste would be really fun on here, especially because she's black and white. Now, I haven't used my black gesso in a hot minute. It has been a long time since I've used my black gesso. So I don't know how usable it is. Let's just be honest. This stuff does dry out over time. Let me see if I can find it. I should have done that before we went live. But of course, I was actually in a meeting. Michelle Maidlow sent me this a long, long time ago. It is, she told me it was Liquitex brand gesso, um, but I haven't used it in a long time. I think it'll be fine because it's in this airtight container, but I probably should get that little, you know, there's usually like a dry, I call them paint boogers. This would be a gesso booger. Well, I guess there's nothing there. I'm just going to paint this page black. I think it's going to be super striking. I may, you know, we have to put a top coat on the page to protect the sticky transfer from sticking to the paper too much. So maybe I'll use some metallic waxes. That would be super fun, right? To use some black with metallic waxes. I love that look, love that look, and I've not done it in a long time. So, whoa, that paintbrush is way too big. I like a short handled paintbrush. How do you feel about that? I don't like the ones that are super long. I feel like they're just like too much to manage. They, they kind of irritate me. <laughs> Thank you for sprinkling. I think this will give you confetti. If I do two, two peace signs, yes, confetti. Thank you for sprinkling. Thanks for sharing the love. You're in Mesa, Arizona. Well, welcome, welcome. I bet the temperature is much warmer there than it is here in North Dakota. Here in North Dakota, I think today it's going to be, I think we're going to hit 40. This is funny. This is a, this is, um, this was a novel by Flannery O'Connor. It was her prayer her prayer journal, actually. I'm covering it with gesso girls. Let's see if that's enough to do a coat. It may, may or may not. We may have to add more. I actually don't mind if it's, let's get her to the side and so that I don't get black gesso on my pretty little ribbon. I'm going to put that away too. Um, I wouldn't mind if, if the gesso is a little scratchy in places because, you know, I kind of like a grunge look to my projects. We were talking about this, where was I talking? I'm taking a workshop about artistry. Um, so you guys aren't the only ones who pay other people to help them grow as artists and, and just learn new techniques. I pay for it too. And then I'm happy to, to share with you guys in the membership group or the workshops that I offer. I'm happy, happy to share with you the things that I have grown to look like I've learned over the years through experience through trial and error or through learning and the own workshops that I pay for. Um, it's kind of like in other, in other businesses, you would call that continuing education, right? You continue to learn. I want to continue to learn and grow as an artist and as a creative, as a crafter, whatever you call yourself. Uh, we, I, I really enjoyed that conversation that we had here about what's the difference between a creator, a crafter, and an artist in your mind. Are there differences or are they all the same? Can we pump, put them all in one same category? Anyway, where was I going with that? Um, where was I going with that? I was going to share you something like a conversation we were having in, in the one workshop that I'm taking now about increasing your artistry. What was I talking about? Grungy. Oh, it's about picking your style. We we're having this conversation about Picking a style, and do you identify yourself as having a style? Because, the question being, how do you pick a style when you love it all? <laughs> how do you pick a style? I love grungy. I love vintage. I love bright and whimsical. Like, look at the bird we did, this birdie here, this bright and whimsical bird we did inside the craft therapy club. I love that. I love romantic. You see it behind me, actually. It's a really good, um, like, example of all the different styles that I love. So I have a really hard time saying that I am, like, an abstract artist. I love abstract art. Or that I'm a... Portrait artist. I love doing faces. This month, I just revealed yesterday to the girls. Oh my gosh, I think I put it back in my office. Did I? Did I? I did. It's back in my office. We're doing Betty. Betty, 
<laughs> Betty, on Friday, we're doing um, a, a painting of a woman's face. She has this amazing, big, curly head of hair, and she's got these huge earrings on, and she's got her big red lips going, and she, she's got this gorgeous, bright headband on her head, and we are going to be painting that in the Craft Therapy Club this month. It's bright and whimsical and fun. Last month, we did something that was not bright and whimsical. Well, mine wasn't bright and whimsical anyway, so I love it all. It's really hard to pick. Do you feel that way? That it's really hard to pick a style? Um, hey, Michelle, welcome, welcome. Glad you made it. Hey, Cheryl. I have crafting ad all over the place. What does that mean? Craft oh, ADD, crafting ADD. Capri, that's a, good, that's a good word for it. Can we call it crafting ADD? I'm serious, girls. Like, when paint pouring became big, I was like, oh, paint pouring. I love it. I bought the stuff to do paint pouring. I used it once or twice, and I discovered for myself, it was just too much work. For what I got out of it, I was like, this is way too messy. I don't, I did not love the mess cleanup. I don't have my concierge yet, my craft room concierge to clean up for me. So maybe if I had a craft room concierge, my fantasy come true, then I wouldn't mind doing paint pouring. But I'm not a paint pourer because... I, I can't with the mess. I can't with the mess. It's just paint, cleaning paintbrushes at the end of the day is enough for me. Um, but when paint pouring came out, I was like, gotta try it. Uh, there's Whenever I see something new, it's like, oh, oh, I want to try embossing powders. I want to try foils. I want to try chalk couture. I, want, I just want to try everything. And that's the beauty of um, being adventurous. Like be adventurous, try it all, and then kind of narrow it down to the things that you like to do the most. I love art journaling. And so I've been able to take... Chalk Couture. When I signed up to be a Chalk Couture designer six years ago, I was doing home decor stuff to put on my wall. But I got bored of that. I only have so much wall space. I don't want to make any more signs for my walls. So I turned to working in books and in art journals. And I have found a really great way of using the Chalk Couture supplies in art journals. So try it all. Try it all. Discover. Explore. I will always, always support you and encourage you and cheer you on with that. Um, so crafting ADD, that is a good way to put it. Kim says, I'm the same way. I'm the very same way. I think a lot of us feel this way. My, um, the membership group that I offer called the Craft Therapy Club is very diverse in the things that we do. And the things that I don't do, I have um, a, a a guest crafter come in, a guest creator every single month. Um, so I can very easily bring someone in to do the things that I don't do, like paint pouring. If you guys in the group said, hey, we wanted, we want to do a paint pouring project, I said, okay, I can find a fellow creative business owner to come in and showcase her talent, because I don't have it, her talent at paint pouring. She can give you some tips and tricks, tell you where to find her. It's a great way to connect the group members with other artists so that we can all keep exploring all the different things. Debbie says, I'm like that, but it is so overwhelming and then I'm stuck with too much stuff. Yes. So this is another good reason, Debbie, to be in a craft club because the schedule that we give you gives you set amount of days to do a set amount of projects and it's all organized and planned for you in a very tidy way. And then you can pick and choose the things that you like to do. And I know you know that because you were a member of the group at one point. Um, but for those of you that don't know it, if you feel like you're all over the place and you need to just hone in so that you can do some creative things, maybe consider joining the group. It doesn't have to be my group, any group, any craft club. Um, I had the best compliment last night. One of the new members, Lori, Lori, if you're here, thank you for saying that. It is, I'm going to hold that in my heart so much. It made me feel so good. She said, this is the most organized craft club I have ever belonged to. Uh, so thank you for telling me that because we do work pretty hard behind the scenes to create an exciting, um, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, exciting, but also something that's going to bring you contentness in your heart where you're creating on a monthly basis with a group of friends. We try really hard to be very organized about that. So I was really happy to hear that. Um, Monica says, I blame you for my new art journal, junk journal addiction. Listen, but they're so good, Monica. It's so much easier to keep your projects in a book than it is to hang them all on the wall behind you and to have to frame them all if you're doing them on canvases. So um, I won't apologize for that. You can blame me. <laughs> you can blame me all you want, girlfriend. You and me were in the same place. If you're loving art journaling and you love junk journaling, 
we're in the same place, friend. Okay, I was gonna use my waxes, but I have to just check some. Oh, maybe foils would be fun. Oh, here I go with the ADD. Should I use whack, metallic waxes? Should I use foils? I'm looking at my supply, because you know I, I reorganized everything. Did I put my waxes right next to me? No, but I have embossing powders right next to me. And glaze. I want this to be black, but I want it to have a metallic sheen. So we made these in the, in the craft therapy club at one point. Like I'm a huge fan of making little um, cards for yourself that are like, it's like the, the table of contents to my embossing powders. So an embossing powder like this, it says gold, but it looks like an olive green. Um, so if I go onto my little sheet, because I want to know how is that really going to look when I when I heat it up. I can go to my little sheets and say, here's my directory of colors. This is what the gold looks like, you know, on a project. It doesn't look like that. It looks like this. So I'm a huge fan of these kinds of um, tips or techniques to making yourself more efficient when you create in a way that's helpful. It's just helpful. It's comfortable to be able to look at these and say, okay, which pack, which one do I want on this page? Do I want, I actually, we're going to use embossing powders. I really like that pearl blueberry. Where I got to find it though. I like the pearl blueberry. There's like this blue metallic. Look at that. And I really like the sparkle. So I want it to be dark, but I still want to show a sheen on there. So let's find these two. Pearl blueberry and <laughs> uh, sparkle. That one's embossing powder. What's the name of this one? I usually write the names on the top so that I can just look down. I just haven't had time to do that in here. Here's the blueberry. And then what was the other one called? Sparkle. I know what that looks like in the container. Or at least I think I know what it looks like. The problem is I've kind of run out of room. I've really grown. Oh, here it is. This is Twilight. There we go. Let's use those two. Let's do some embossing. I wasn't really expecting them, but this could be fun. Now, do I want to use a stamp to emboss? Do I want to use a stencil to emboss? There's so many options. What kind of glue do I want to use? We've gone through all of this. We were art journaling a couple of months ago in the club when we made these and we talked about, I have many different glues for embossing. We talked about all of them. I think I will use the dauber with, maybe I'll just use some stamps. Let's grab a couple of stamps. We're just gonna make some marks with the dauber and some stamps and we're going to emboss. That should be fun. Yeah, it'd just be a little fun here. We're just gonna have a little fun. Okay, let's open up the stamps first. And actually, I have her as my little inspiration. She's going on here as is one of those sets of words. So I only have a little bit of space behind her. So actually, maybe I'll just stick with I have these like dot stamps. Maybe we'll just stick with that. Okay, and then I have to decide my bright color paste that I absolutely am committed to using, which color of, I think I'm gonna use the yellow paste and let's just stick to one embossing powder and we'll do the blueberry. So we'll have a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow with her, she's black and white. Now I could also, as an option, if I wanted to make her have her, a little bit of color, like I could add some blue to her dress or something. So we'll, we'll decide that later. Let's get the embossing done first and then we'll have to do top coat. So it's a couple of little steps, but we got this girls, we got this. All right, we need a piece of paper. It's actually, this is the envelope for one of the Club Couture transfers. I'm gonna use that underneath my page to grab the embossing powder. So I'm gonna step up, stand up so that I can do this more move around a little bit more. Um, is that a dandelion? Is what a dandelion, darling? Where what? Where what? Uh, the stamp? Are you asking about the stamp? Tell me what you're asking about. I will answer your question. Uh, let's see. Do you mean the color? The color is bumblebee. This is a really old color. Not available anymore. We have yellows available, but it's not called Bumblebee. That's the one that I have. In fact, I should check it because, um, again, it's really old. I haven't used it in a while. No, it's totally fine. It's nice and wet, ready to go. Hey, Callie. Hi, a friend. 
Callie's a Craft Therapy Club member. If you're a Craft Therapy Club member, give me a hey ho in the comments. Subscribers, we know that you're here because you got that blue teal heart next to your name. Okay, we're daubing, we're stamping, we're embossing. Okay, and she's gonna go here. There's gonna be a little phrase next to her. I like you look amazing, but it may or may not fit on there. In fact, let's just, girls, I should have been more ready. I was in a really great chat with a couple of business buddies. You guys know Mara LaFay and um, Kim Jenkin, uh, my two business buddies. One is in New Jersey and the other is way out in California. And we had a little, um, a little Zoom call today just to chat, chit chat, check in on each other, how things going what's going on in your world so we were chit-chatting I should have been in here getting ready so I apologize for that but I have everything kind of right here so it's okay when I teach workshops everything of course is planned out organized all that jazz when I go live on public page it's usually like let's let's see what we can make I'm usually making it up as I go <laughs> I kind of have an idea but we're making it up as we go so you get to kind of witness that. Okay, let's just see, is she gonna, yes, this is gonna fit flipping perfectly, but that means I have this whole area up here to do something decorative embossing wise. I love this stamp too, and I don't use it very often. That would fit really well. I wouldn't put just the square there because it just would be a little weird to just have one stamped square in that corner, but I'm looking for something else that I might be able to use that's decorative. I love patterns. I could use like a bird or something too. I don't have to just do a pattern, but I think I will stick to the pattern. I don't know why, but I'm a fan of random numbers on projects, so I got some numbers there. I'll put this one away. Let's stick to the stamp. All right, we're going to daub. I need it to come out more than that. So I'm going to squeeze until it, the dauber gets really wet. There we go. Now we're getting it. Then it will come through on here. I try to avoid the edges because I don't want a straight edge on my project if that's the way the stamp is designed. This stamp actually has... If the edge is not perfectly straight, so I should be okay. I'm just going to stamp some. I want it to be random. I don't want it to be real perfect. So this is the glue that's going to hold the embossing powders down. And then we melt the embossing powder into the glue. And that's what makes it stick on the page. So she can take up more room because that little phrase is going to fit perfectly right here. Now I'm getting embossing glue all over my fingers. I'm going to put a little behind her so it kind of peeks out from where she sit, where she is. And let's see if I can get a little up there. And then maybe even a little down here behind, I need more embossing liquid, behind where the words are going to be. Let's just put a bit there. Yes. All right. Now the embossing powder. Before I do that, I do like to clean my stamps. If I use... The embossing liquid or anything that's you know a medium that you would you would want to get it like a glue you're gonna to want to get it off your stamp right away so let's just take a quick minute and clean that off the embossing glues generally stay tacky it's not gonna dry up on you enough that you're not gonna be able to get the embossing powder to stick to it it's not like paint that's gonna dry right away um, what did I say? Twilight? No, blueberry. Blueberry. We're going to use blueberry. This is going to be interesting because I could have this landing in my book, but we're going to try to be careful and not have that happen. We're spreading. We're sprinkling. Just like I ask you guys to share it, share out there, sprinkle out the comfiness with grace. Help me meet new people. I'm sprinkling my embossing powder. Look at that. We're both doing a version of sprinkling. Then I do kind of like to tap on the surface to get it to like settle in. <laughs> I always I always make up words. I have a variety of sounds that come from me when I create. Um, you're getting the real the real deal here. You're getting the real Gracie Grew. 
And uh, I love sharing it with you guys. I love that you're here to hang out with me. It's just, you get the authentic grace. All right, we tap it off. Sometimes you will need to use a brush. I usually have a, I'll show it to you here in a second, a chip brush that I use that has really loose bristles that once you've gotten to this point, if you have an excess of powder in places where you don't want it, um, I use a brush, this brush here. It's got really loose, open bristles and you can come in and like brush off. If it's just sitting in places where you don't want it, you can brush it off with something loose like that. It actually is great where it is. So I'm gonna leave it where it is. We're gonna heat the heck up out of this and, and get it to shine. Can you see a little bit of where it is? We're gonna heat it up, make it shine, and then we'll glue our girl down on top of that. We'll decoupage her down. I think I'll use Mod Podge so at the same time I can be top coating it. And then we'll be able to do the chalking. Pretty easy, right? Not, not a really hard project, to be truthful with you. All right, focus, Grace. Focus, talk about ADD, Kelly. Was it Kelly? Were you the one who said that, right? That you had ADD? Who was it that said it? Because I think I'm experiencing that right now. Monica, was it you that said it? Debbie says, I have to come back to the craft therapy club. I miss you all. We miss you too, Debbie. Come back. We are doing so many fellowship things now. Um, so this, right now we have the craft box relay happening. So I created a big box of craft supplies and then asked anybody who wanted to join it. it you know, it's part of the cost of being in the group. It's $15 a month to be in the group. Then this is one of the fellowship activities we're doing. Craft box relay starts at my house. I asked whoever wanted to sign up. They're on a list, name and address. The list goes in the box. I choose one of those people. I'm sending the box to one of those people. I sent it to Lori. Um, Lori gets the box. She has four days to pour through the box, take out the supplies she wants, put supplies in, things that she maybe has laying around that she's not using, doesn't want, new or gently used, and then she's gonna send it to the next person on the list and mark, her, mark that person down. And the box relay is just hopping from house to house for, between the members. It's been so much fun. Seven of the ladies have gotten it. Um, when the last person is done, they're gonna send the box back to me. So that's called Craft Box Relay. That's something new. We didn't do, Debbie, when you were part of the group, but we're doing that now. And then on Thursday, so tomorrow, I'm going to, we're starting a creative bingo um, event challenge in the group. You know, we have open craft night every month where we just get together by Zoom and we all work on whatever projects we want to. We also do regular bingo every month for prizes. I give away two to three prizes a month for that. We have our craft it challenge to share the projects that you do every month from within the group or from anywhere. Share any project that you've created. And each project photo that you share, you get a chance to win a box of craft supplies. Um, we obviously have our workshop. So this month it's Betty. <laughs> Betty on Friday is our painting this month. I wish I had her here. I don't. She's um she's on my desk in my office. Um, Betty on Friday, we have a guest crafter every month come in. It's really full. I do gratitude journaling, art journaling every single Sunday in the group. So it's been very active and very full. My heart is full with all the activity in that group, all of the projects that are being shared. I love the napkin swaps. I love the project swaps. Um, I love the ladies in that group. And Debbie, you're always welcome to come back. The doors are closed right now to that group. But if you're interested in joining us in the future, go to crafttherapyclub.com and, and get on the wait list because the last eight ladies that I just let into the group, I sent them the welcome gifts yesterday. Um, those last eight ladies that just came in the group, they came from the wait list. I only sent a private invitation to the wait list. And um, it's just really easy for me to manage uh, new, new members that way. So make sure you get on the wait list. If you, if you, even if you have been a member in the past and you, you're considering rejoining. So Debbie, get on the wait list. I will be sending an invitation out eventually to past members um, who have been a part of the group and have left for whatever reason. Would love to welcome you guys back. Would love it. Okay, let's see. I'm going to take a little drink of water. Michelle said, I'm moving Back to Maine on Friday. Good luck with the move. I hope it goes really well. I hope the weather cooperates. 
I hope things don't get lost <laughs> because you know when when you have a move it's like what box is it in I hope you find things easily I hope it all works out good all right this is what we got so far right pretty modern looking pretty abstract I'm a huge fan of that it's kind of grungy let's get her down on here and I, I think I'm going to start gluing her down so that I don't wet the page too much. I think I'm going to glue her down with a glue stick and then go over her with Mod Podge. I just think that will be easier to manage the wetness. Because I'm going to have to dry the Mod Podge. Um, I'm feeling like I want something underneath her because I don't want to get glue all over my table. It's just an old catalog. I think it's my actually my Blue Cross Blue Shield. <laughs> booklet from a few years ago. I save stuff like that so I can use them as glue backdrops or cutting mat if need be in a quick instant. All right, let's put that on the floor. She's going to be in her glory right here, hanging out on my page. And now would be the time before I Mod Podge her if I want to color her dress. Oh, now would be the time. Should I put a tint of anything on her dress? I forgot to cut that one part out, but I'm not going to worry about it now. I'm going to grab my Mod Podge while you guys comment. Do you think I should put a hint of color on her dress? Like a light blue? I was thinking a light blue would be pretty. All right, Gracie, get it together. Embossing powders, they go here. Let's get these off the table just so I have a little room here. So I don't need the embossing glue anymore. I don't need the glue stick. It didn't make much room. What do you think? Should we leave her black and white? I'm going to put You Are Amazing right here, and it's going to be really bright yellow. I could add just a little bit of yellow to her flowers. I made my mind up. I, I asked you for your opinion, and then I made my mind up on my own. <laughs> sorry about that. I wasn't trying to be a puke. I wasn't trying to be mean or anything. I asked you your opinion and now I made my mind up. What if we just add a pop of yellow in her floral? She has this little sunflower. You'll see it here in a second. I'm just going to add, I have this little marker from Stampin' Up from 15 years ago when I used to scrapbook the traditional way. So I'm just going to dot in a little bit of yellow on a couple of these florals. In fact, Maybe I should even add a blue flower. Let's do this. We'll do yellow on the sunflower, yellow on one of the other flowers, and then let me grab a blue just to kind of mimic the blueberry colored. Um, that's really dark. It's perfect. Well, no. Because she's black and white, I feel like the really dark blue is going to get lost if you look at the little patch of flowers on her waist right here, if I do a super dark blue, it's probably going to get just blend in with the black. So I'm going to try to find a lighter color. That's too dark too as well. All right. I'm not, I don't have a blue that's light enough. So let's, I use this peach a lot. This peachy color. Is this the one? Peachy. See what I'm doing over here? On the side, I've got my little um, paper towel here, and I'm just, that is dark purple. I'm looking for something super light, super soft. We might have to just go with what we got. What is this color? Oh, that's better. Let's do this. This is kind of like a purple. Nope, it's going to get lost in the black. I just know it is. All right, I've got stuff in my way. Trying each one of them out over here. But see how they're really, I don't know if you can see this. Look at how dark they are. They're just, it's too much, too much color. Think, Grace, think. Uh, I could use a watercolor, but... I'll just stick with yellow because I want it to be seen. I don't want it to get lost. I'm just going to add yellow flowers. It will complement the blue. All right. She's got a whole lot of flowers on her hip there. All right. We just went with yellow. I love just when these black and white vintage photos and you just add just a tish of color, 
it just it just pops and showcases so well. Um, gold would have been nice too, Ginny. That's a great suggestion. I didn't do it, but gold would have been a good. That would have been that would have worked out great too. Okay, I do have quite a mess going here, as usual, as usual, Gracie. Hmm. I was I hadn't pulled my numbers out and I didn't do anything with them. Somebody throw out a random two-digit number. Three-digit, excuse me, three-digit number. Give me some random three-digit number. Because it really doesn't matter what the number is. I just like the look of numbers. I'm going to grab a white permanent, um, what is this called? Stamp pad. And we're going to put a three-digit number somewhere on here just because we can. 232. Mitzi, yours is the first I saw. 232. That's good. Well, you... Is my two missing? <gasps> two, three, two. Mitzi, where's my two? Oh, jeez. No, that's a zero. That's a W. What the heck? I got, oh, here it is. Got separated. I was scared there for a minute. I bought these from the thrift store. So then I was like, and maybe there was a number missing all the, from the beginning. Two, three, two. We're going to put two, three, two somewhere on here. Mitzi gave me the number. I think I'll put it up in this corner because we're going to have the wording down here. So I think I'll just have a random 232 two up in this corner. How much room do I need? I need that much room. I'll do the three first, then the two. No, two first because she said 232. Two. And before I go in on here, I want to make sure that this is working. So I will take like a random piece of paper. Yes, and make sure that it's juicy enough, like it has enough juice on there. I don't really like things to be super perfect. Imagine that. Gracie likes grungy. Grungy Gracie. <laughs> grungy Gracie. Two. I shouldn't have cleaned my two, right? I should have kept it wet. But what was I thinking? Three. I'm cleaning them right away. I, I like to get in the habit of cleaning them right away with something like this. Um... Now I got to do the two again. That was kind of dopey that I did it twice in a row. Two, three, two. I like my numbers a little more wonky than they turned out. They're a little bit too perfect, but they're on there. They're random. There's no reason for it. It just is visually interesting. Two, three, two, up in the corner there. Mitzi, thank you for the suggestion. I know a lot of you jumped out suggestions at me. Eight, four, three. I see them. I see all your numbers. Thank you for that. Um, hey, Constance. I don't know. My screen is, I'm watching... The, the live feed on my computer so that I can see the comments and it's not frozen for me. I'm using Google Chrome and it's not frozen for me. So um, maybe somebody else can answer too. All right, we're gonna do a coat of Mod Podge and then we're gonna chalk and it'll be done. I just was thinking, before we say I'll be done, let's look at it, just look at it from afar. I think, I think I'll be really satisfied with this that way. Um, so that means, Gracie, to get out the brush for the glue, Mod Podge glue or top coat. We're going to use it as a top coat right now. Make sure you can see what I'm doing. So the top coat is going to do two things. It's going to protect the paper, well, three things. Protect the paper and keep it sealed. It's gonna protect my, my girl. Now my girl is a piece of paper that is glued down to a paper inside a book. It's gonna seal it all together so it doesn't like bump, jump off the page or like a corner come up or something like that. So it's gonna seal it. It's also going to protect my transfer because remember these are sticky transfers. They're sticky and the stickiness will stay. You, they're reusable. You're gonna put the paste through them to get the, the words down like a stencil. I think they changed the name. It used to be called a transfer. Now they're calling them stencils. But when you put it on, you stencil on the paste or whatever you want to whatever product you want to use, but it's made to be used with chalk paste. Then when you peel it up, you don't want that sticky to stick so strongly to your paper that it rips it. So it's protecting your transfer or your chalk or stencil from that. Okay, I'm going to start in the middle and move up. And right now, there's nothing here that should smear. Nothing here is water reactive. Maybe the maybe the marker. Is it? I don't remember. Stampin' Up markers, are they water resistant or are they water reactive? Does anybody know? I'm just putting a really thick coat of glue on. I'm not worried right now about brush strokes. 
It's just right now to get it wet. Okay, cover it all up, girls. Cover it all up. Once I got it all wet and covered, then we'll go back with the paint, the paint brush and we will even out the strokes and get rid of the, you know, any like, you want the brush strokes to all be even thickness of the Mod Podge on there. You don't want to have it super thick over here and then thin over there. So I guess what I'm getting at. You can go whatever way you want. You may see a brush stroke or two with Mod Podge. Um, I think I'm going to go actually up and down instead of horizontal. I think I want my brush lines to go up and down. But I, I'm really being <laughs> careful to make sure I get my edges. So now I'll just take that brush and I'm going to run it up and down. So they're all going the same way. I'm going to add a little bit more to my brush because it's not really flowing real easy. It's kind of sticking. This is just in case your brush strokes, that's a really hard word to say for me, brush strokes, if they do show, you kind of want them all going the same direction. You don't want it to look all, well, maybe you do want it to look wonky. I like them all to be kind of cohesive if they are going to show in that instance. Okay, around her, like right here, there's just a bit of missing glue or top coat. Come on, baby doll, work with me here. I need a little bit, not a lot, but I'm going to hit right here again because it just didn't get covered. The paper, because we've added all this glue and embossing fluid and gesso to it, the papers get crinkly and warped. I love that look because I love grungy, grungy grace. Um, but that means that your brush stroke isn't, you know, when you run your brush across it, you could have these like highs and lows that you really want to make sure that you're hitting. I'm going to give you the same spiel. Oh no, I'm going to give you the same spiel I always give you guys. I said, oh no, because my, my numbers smeared. Hold on. That shouldn't have happened. Exclusive inks pigments. This shouldn't have smeared. This should have been permanent. I don't know what happened right there, but the, the Mod Podge made it schmear. I'll show you in a minute. It's, I don't know, it's hard for me to say that word, schmear. It smeared my numbers. I could redo them though. I could redo them. They just look chalky now. They look like, it looks like chalkboard, chalk that got smeared on the chalkboard. I'll show you here in a second. And I could redo them or I could leave them the way they are. You let me know what you think. I'm drying it. The heat doesn't do anything. Just a drying tool is sufficient, but look what happened to my 232. Oh my gosh, that is so cute, you guys. See the little bit of a sheen on there? Whatever, whatever top coat you use, you pick, right? You either want glossy. Sometimes I like glossy. Sometimes I, I used to always do matte. Like I was just a matte girl. That's all I was gonna use. But I have glossy and I started using it in some of my art journal pages and I love the look of it. This is really high gloss. That is actually a really high gloss on that project and I absolutely loved that. So now I'm not, I'm not so solid on matte. I usually use matte. This one is called hard coat and it leaves a glossy, I would call it semi-glossy sheen, okay? So just know... You have matte, you have satin, you have semi-gloss, you have glossy, you have ultra glossy. Some of the top coats have glitter in them, all kinds of options, which make it really fun. That turned out so darn cute just the way it is. I'm going to leave the 232 smeared, smeared. Um, I put my transfer on my pants. I just was fuzzing it, adding a little fuzz to the back. Hey, Nancy, how are you, friend? Thanks for being here. Isn't she so cute, Capri? The web, the interwebs, <laughs> is um, if you're willing to spend, it does take hours and hours of time, I will give you that. But if you're willing to spend the time or purchase a membership uh, for vintage copyright free graphics or even copyrighted graphics, if you're willing to spend the money, it is really, I use graphics all the time as focal points on my projects and they make me really happy. They just, they just do, especially the vintage ones. Wow, I am just gonna fit this on here and actually the A, part of it's gonna be on her leg. <laughs> she's, gonna have, she, her, she's looking amazing. 
but she's looking amazing with the A on her leg. That's just the way it's going to be. So we're going to stick this down on here. I will give you the spiel I always give. This stuff takes a while to cure. Okay. If you look at the thing, um, cures in, dries in 15 to 20 minutes. It usually tells you how long it let cure for four weeks. We ain't got four weeks. I don't even have 15, 20 minutes, right? I forced it to dry. And now we put the transfer on there with the expectation or the hope that when I peel this back up, it's not going to take my paper back up with it. Okay. So I'm not pushing really hard on the transfer because, and I'm not pushing on the whole thing, just on the words. I'm going to push my paste through there. I'm going to pull it up hoping that it's not going to take anything from underneath with it. So if you have the option at home and you're doing a project like this, get to this point, walk away, go get your supper ready or your lunch ready. Like I say, play with the dog, go make a phone call to your sister, go to the library, whatever you're going to do, go to your work, come back home. When you come back home later, do this next step, give it some time to dry on its own time without forcing it dry, if possible, you will always have better results that way. Um, I feel like it's a little risky forcing it to go this quickly. We do this when we do our live demonstrations because you wanna see the whole project, right? You wanna be inspired and be like, yes, I wanna do that in my book. <laughs> well, at least that's my hope for you is that you're inspired by what I share. That's the whole reason I do what I do is to inspire you to create more often because it brings us joy. That's that's the whole thing. Go create something pretty that brings your heart joy. That's what I want for you every day to have that time. Every day is hard. I know it's hard for me even to create every day, but that's the goal when you're a creative person. All right. We push the paste through. We pull it up. It looks amazing. I'm going to show you here in a minute. Dirty transfer. I'm putting it back on here. I will take this whole thing to my laundry room. I'll run that under like just lukewarm or cool water. I'll rub it with the, the, the transfer um, cleaner, like the, the little pad, and then let it air dry with the sticky side up and then put it back on there. Oh my gosh, I love her so much. Girls, you let me know what you think. The project is done. The project, you guys, I'm becoming a fan of yellow. I'm becoming a fan of yellow. What is going on here? What do you think? I always think it's funny when I come back to... When I come back to these, I don't know if you've ever noticed this. When I come back to these and I'm trying to show this up to you close, so I show it to you close, like I'm trying to get real close to the camera. But in order for me to see if you're seeing it in the camera, I have to peek. So I'm like this. You can see me right <laughs> peeking. Like I'm peeking like the Easter Bunny came and I'm like, oh, what did he bring? I'm peeking from over here because I need to see if you can see it. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. Oh my word. Yes. Yes. We can chalk journal. I call this chalk journaling. I think I'm the only person who does it. I don't know. I've never seen anybody else use chalk couture project products in books like I do to make art journal pages. Chalk journal pages is what I'm calling them. Um, but I'm having so much fun doing this and showing you ways that you can use your chalk couture supplies outside of what you're doing for home decor and gifts outside of that. If you are a paper crafter, a junk journaler, a scrapbooker, um, an art journaler, this has just become such a fun practice. And I've been doing it every Wednesday here on, on the page. If you're not part of the Telegram channel, you might want to join the Telegram channel so you get live notifications. I send out the weekly schedule. I also post the weekly schedule here and pin it to the top of the page every Monday. I'm so glad you like it, Mitzi. Um, she Does she need a tiara? Wouldn't that be cute? Can we find a, can I, maybe I can just, you know what I'll do? I love that idea. I have a yellow paint. I love, have a yellow paint marker. Let's give her a tiara. I just so love that you made that suggestion, Lisa. Um, it's going to be, I have a gold paint pen, but I, I really dislike these paint pens. I put a mark of yellow. When I'm going to do something like this, I'm going to add another color to this. We have yellow, very pale yellow in her flower. We have the bright yellow, which is called Bumblebee from Chalk Couture that says, you look amazing. I love the idea of a, a tiara. 
I made a mark with my yellow paint marker on this white paper towel. Let me do the gold. I am incredibly visual. I can't tell you how many times I like pull something out when, when I first started creating. I would pull out a marker and go, yes, I wanted to have a gold tiara. And I'd go in with the gold and I'd be like, man, that's the wrong gold. Every gold is not the same. Every gold is not the same. I think you can see it even in my, where are my swatches? Look at this. Even in my swatches of glaze and embossing glazes and embossing powders, like gold is not gold is not gold. Like they all, some of them look more olive green. Some of them look more bright yellow. So I always now I've gotten into the habit when I'm gonna go in with a new color, just off to the side, I put a mark over here because I need to know if that's going to be, if it's going to jive. Here are our two options right now. I'm making such a mess. I always do. I'm like a little kid in kindergarten class when I play with my art supplies. Here are the two options. Yellow, yellow, or really dark gold. The really dark gold, it's not going to show up real well on the black gesso. It's not, it's just not going to show up really well, even though it says it's a metallic paint. I just know it's not going to show up really well. The bright yellow is going to show up. So I'm going to make her a little bright yellow um, crown. It won't be a tiara. It's going to be a crown because I don't know how to make a tiara. I know how to make a crown. And it will match the yellow bumblebee paste better. I better be careful because I have not dried that and I just touched it and still felt a little damp. Over here, before I go on on my project again, I have learned, okay, how do you make a crown again? I'm, I'm thinking in my head, how do I do it again? Well, I want my hand. It's one thing to think it in your head. It's another thing to get your hand to do what you're thinking in your head. Practice, practice, practice. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to, how do I want this to look? Do I want the edges to come out to the side like that? Or do I want some crowns go straight up and some of them go like that? So I'm, I'm practicing over here. I'm going to see. What do I want this to look like? Yeah, that's that's too much of a it's too much of a grade. Okay, I'm just doing it over here to the side. What if I just did it before I go in on her because I want it to look nice. So not so much of a a wide. And then if I did this, it would be a tall skinny. I'm going to go tall and skinny. Because I want it to be tall and skinny and her head is really close to the top, I'm actually going to start making, I'm going to make a dot at the top. These are all the tips that I teach inside the Craft Therapy Club, you guys. I'm going to see, whoa, I didn't mean to turn you guys around like that. I was going to see if I could zoom in a little. Come on. Does Facebook still let you zoom in? It does not. All right, you're going to have to just kind of live with what you got here for view. I'm going to make a dot close to the top. I want it to be tall and skinny. So I'm going to make a dot there so I know that's where my, the middle peak of her crown. That's so, that looks so funny. My hat, it has three corners. Three corners has my hat. And hat and not three corners. How does that end? Do you guys know? Do you remember that thing? That little song or ditty? I'm going to start with the middle peak because I need to make sure I don't go too high up, you know, up over the page. Middle peak first. Then I'm going to make her sides. She's going to have kind of a tall skinny. You could come in with a pencil or like, um, uh, like I have these chalk pencils and they're erasable off of almost anything, fabric included. So those are really helpful if you're trying to do something and you want to make sure that you etch it out before you go in with your permanent marker. Okay, she's going to have this big crown. Now the Mod Podge is resisting my paint. It's doing its job. It is a waterproof top coat. So it's kind of resisting the paint. So I might have to do this a couple of times to get it to really show. I don't want her head to turn yellow. So I'm going to purposefully try to leave a little bit of a gap. Because remember, she's paper. And if there's any gap in the Mod Podge top coat, then her head, it's going to soak up the yellow paint. And I don't want her head to become yellow. So I'm going to be careful around her head. It is sitting on top there. I want to, I'm going to put it close to you so you can see there are a couple of places. It's so cute. There are a couple of places in the paint, the yellow paint of her crown, where it's not quite so thick. It's resisting. It's pulling off. It's water resistant. So when you put something wet on it, it's supposed to pull it off so you can like wipe it up 
quickly and it doesn't absorb into the paper below it. So you can kind of see where, here, may I, here I am peeking again. There's a couple of spots there where it's not completely yellow. So I, I'm going to let that dry. I'm gonna fix this one peak. I want it a little pointier. I'm gonna let that dry completely, which will take a little while. I'm not even gonna force it with air, but I'm gonna let it dry completely. And then I will go back with this again um, to give it a second coat so it shows up even more vibrant. But check her out. You get the point, right? The crown is perfect. It is perfect. So thank you for that suggestion. I love it so much more. I do. It's whimsical and fun. Hey, Diana Barker. How are you, friend? Hey, Melissa. You caught me live, girlfriend. You caught me live. You did. Endless ideas, right, Mitzi? You could take this a million different ways. You could do so many different things with this. If instead of putting the little blue polka dots in the background, if that's not your jam and you're not loving it, you could put a big bright yellow sun with a paint marker. Um, or you could just, you know, with regular acrylic paints before you do the top coat. Endless, endless possibilities. You could use a stencil. If you had a stencil of a sun or stars or something and that's what you wanted in the background for her, you could do that. Yes, endless possibilities. You are so right. And Lynn says she's just perfect. She's just perfect. Isn't she so cute? You look amazing. I love the yellow in three places. One, two, three. It really, when we do artistic things, when we do design things, they always tell us to do it in odd numbers. So three, five, seven, not, you, usually you see threes and fives. One, two, three, and we got our three yellow spots right there. Um, yellow, yellow, Bitsy says yellow, yellow. Yes, Betty, you could have layered. Yes, I could have layered with the two paint markers, but I don't think I would have had enough time. I have a 12.30 appointment that I get to, got to get to, so I have two more minutes here with you guys. And then I got to run because I got to drive across town for an appointment that, um, that I have. So I just thought I'm not going to have time to wait for the gold to dry and then do the yellow. But you absolutely can. You can layer things. I think that's a good idea. Um, Callie says, I wish I could get a chalk to a sample kit with a couple small transfers and just a few colors of chalk. Callie, I sell a sample kit on my website. Go to thecompanyestwithgrace.com. Um, Callie, just message me. I have sample kits. I have about five or six of them left. I could send it to you. It has one color, one transfer, one surface, and it comes with the, it's a tag. So it comes with the string for the tag. Um, but I could help you with that if you messaged me. Callie, did you see my message above? Is that the one you're, I hope that's the one that you're asking about. If not, just private message me. I wasn't sure if the yellow would show up better over the gold. I'm not sure. It's worth, you know, if you're not sure, like I, like I've been saying, do it on a piece of paper off to the side. You can always test that stuff out. I would really highly recommend testing it out off to the side before you go in on your actual project. You're welcome, Kathy. You're welcome. I hope this brought you a little bit of joy. I hope you had some fun hanging out with us. If you are not following the page, I would humbly ask for you to do that. It helps us so much to have more followers hanging out with us and getting our notifications. Um, I'd love to have your company anytime I'm live. The schedule is always posted here and put in the feature tab. I also share it to the Telegram channel and in the Crafty Chicks Club. And the Crafty Chicks is my free group here on Facebook called the Crafty Chicks Club. So you can look that up and join there if you'd like. When you join that, I ask if you'd like to get my weekly email. I send an email out every Sunday that gives a recap of all of the projects of the week with the links to the projects that were out on the public domain so that if you want to watch them and go back, if you missed anything, you can go back and watch it over your weekend. So there you have all the information I think that you need. My website is thecompanyestwithgrace.com. But I'm Grace. I'm just thrilled that you were here. I'm sending some hearts your way. Thank you for being here. Go make something pretty that brings your heart joy, guys. Take care.